I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another review? There's another paid request this time for Ben, as for the 2008 film The Hurt Locker. Now, The Hurt Locker, I'd seen this film a long time ago. I'm actually was actually curious to see if it would hold up, and I thought it did. I still really enjoyed the movie. It's directed by Catherine Bigelow. Uh, she did Point Break with Keanu Reeves. She did Steel with Jamie Lee Curtis. Near Dark. Now, it's one of those films where it did a really nice job showcasing, but not in a, in my opinion, blatant fashion, about how some people might be going through Iraq, especially at the time. In particular, Jeremy Renner's character, where he just best way to look at it, it became an, an almost an adrenaline junkie like he needed it but a much more sad fashion where even in civilian life family life it almost meant nothing for him and but he needs this he needs to push it further and further and probably probably will ultimately lead to his death i don't know maybe maybe not but I'm trying to think this if this was the first time I had seen Jeremy Renner, it might have been. Because I know he was in films like Twenty Weeks Later and other stuff, but I'm just saying this might have been the first time I saw him. I, yeah, I can't remember for certain. But the cast, Anthony Mackie, which is funny because you have Hawkeye and then you have Falcon. Before they were in those movies, they were in this. Effie and Matthew, I thought, did a great job. Uh, you also have Guy Pierce. You have Ray Fiennes. And the, the gist of the film, like, it's a long film, but it's a pretty straightforward movie. I think that's one of the big bonuses of the movie. It doesn't really go off kilter. There's not endless amount of subplots to bog the movie down. And I thought Catherine Ridwell did a, an excellent job filming the movie. She used slow motion when it needed to be done. It wasn't four hours of constant fucking slow motion like fucking Zack Snyder. I know someone mentioned, well, this is a lot of slow motion. Well, this movie isn't four hours long. Just I did my take on it. Slow motion was used when it needed to. For example, in the beginning, things don't work out as you think they will. And you have this nice usage of slow motion to amplify... And signify this sequence and the importance and the ooh shit moment. Spoiler alert. Spoilers. Guy Pierce who you, you know, hey, I recognize the actor. You think he's going to be a bigger part of the movie? No. Boom explosion. Rock is through the ground. And ultimately does kill Guy Pierce. And so a new guy comes in to be the leader. And that's Jeremy Renner. 
and him, Anthony Mackie, and this other guy, these two get Jeremy Renner's back, and they go from point A to point B to point Z, showcasing the days as they follow this guy who disarms bombs. That's his job. He disarms bombs, explosives, and Jeremy Renner is a bit more of a maverick. Like the first time he goes in, he even throws some smoke grenade, grenades just to hide whoever might be watching him. And there's a guy that drives towards him and Jeremy Renner is able to psych him out and get him to back the fuck up. And he's able to do his job and Effie Matty and him have some friction. You know, I can figure out a redneck piece of trailer trash like you. And Jeremy Renner goes, huh, looks like you're on the right track. Cool. We'll work out. And it just showing like him. And there's some nice suspense of how is this situation going to play out. For example, there's a bit with a car. And there's a whole fucking load of explosives. And he's taking stuff off. They're wondering, why are you taking stuff off? Because this explosive is going to kill everybody. So if I'm going to die, I want to die comfortable. And just him looking through all the car dashboard. Trying to find exactly where he needs to go. While Anthony Mackie and the other guy, they're watching and more and more people keep watching them. There's a guy with a video camera. Then there's another guy. Then there's another guy. Then another guy talking to the other guy. And I haven't seen the film in a while. So no, it's not like I thought everyone was going to die. I knew that. But it was like, I wasn't remembering exactly how this was going to play out. And... Sorry for the pause there, but I'm thinking, why is it that the suspense in this works, at least for me? I think it's because, not, again, not because I think, oh, they don't live or die. It's a different kind of suspense where Catherine Bigelow did a nice job of stringing the tension along where things escalate a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. But it doesn't feel too forced and I don't think it feels too phony and like there's a scene where these mercenaries including Ray Fiennes they have these guys there's a shootout that happens and then things kind of rise up and rise up. Spoiler alerts again spoilers they're getting shot at then Ray Fiennes gets hit oh shit so now Anthony Mackie got to take the sniper rifle and then uh, Jeremy Renner's got a be a spotter. Oh, then there's a guy on their six, and then the third guy take it out. And Jeremy Murray's like, "It's up to you, man. You do what you need to do." You know, playing off cool, just trying to get through the day. And Jeremy Renner, again, the interesting thing about his character is that he seems at times like he doesn't care, but he'll do stuff that he really does care. It's like a part of him stuff that's shut off, and there are times he opens up. But it doesn't feel goofy. It doesn't feel corny. There's just certain nice things he'll do. <clears throat> For example, when Anthony Matty has the sniper rifle, and Jeremy Rogers like, "Give me some juice," like one of those like Capri Sun type of things. He's opened it up, and I'm thinking, "Oh, he's going to drink it." No, he's he does it to give the Anthony Matty, and doesn't drink anything himself. Or they try to get the sniper bullets clean in his gun. And you think, oh, Jeremy Renner, he's going to yell, curse him out. No, he's like, hey, hey, it's okay, man. Okay? Hey, squeeze this, all right? See? You're going to be okay, man. You're going to be good. It's okay that like, this guy does have a good potential of leadership to him. He's got a good heart to him. He does care. Like, what he thinks this kid died who was selling him DVDs and he gets upset and he gets uh, obsessed with finding out who did this and then again spoiler alert find out that he was wrong that kid is fucking alive but then he just walks by him to shut him shut himself away even more it's like he's purposely trying to shut himself away from feeling these emotions to the point that when he goes home at the end, he just doesn't feel anything. 
Like he, I'm sure he loves his family, but he just doesn't feel anything. And the one thing he feels for is when he's out there, and that's why the last scene is him going back. And it's what, his 365th day? I think that's what it, sh it says. So it just... He's in it for the long haul. You know, the Hurt Locker, I guess, best way to put it. He's in it to uh, probably... The only way he'll end is when he dies or something. Or they force him not to come back. I hear that the actors do well. You know, like Anthony Mackie who stands up to him and is like, hey, what are you doing? And um, I, Anthony Mackie I thought did a good job. And I, this was, I think, the first time I saw him too. And then I would see him in films like Pain and Gain and, you know, the Captain America... Captain America films. The Winter Soldier. And then. Uh, Civil War. But the guy appears. Nice to see him. Sadly he's dying in the film too much. Ray finds. He does fine. In the small role he's in. And there's some really good looking shots from the director. Like there's a shot where our. Folks are in the vehicle. And you see real far away this guy, and the way this explosion happens, you just see this wall of dust, just, just really feel the impact. Like, ooh, like if you're in that, you're really in the Jeep, you're in the vehicle with them, and you just feel that force of just, just overcome you. Like, oh shit, that kind of reaction. How, and also in an instance, someone can be gone. Just, no... What's the word I'm looking for? There's no... God, there's a certain... God, there's a certain word I'm thinking of and it's going to be driving me crazy because I can't fucking think of it, damn it. But anyway, it's just... No remorse. Like, war... Showing that war has no remorse. Doesn't care about your feelings. Doesn't care about your thoughts. Yeah moment to just happen like oh shit and it, it was also interesting to see like what different bomb was going to happen next like you have this bomb and then this reveal of all these streams and it's like oh shit there's like six fucking bombs in the sand that was a, like ooh, good oh shit moment or the stuff in the car or this thing called a body bomb and him having to get into this dead kid's body for this bomb and again the, the different types of bombs I wish something like uh, there was this movie called The Final Cut with Sam Elliott. Kind of wish that film was kind of like this, not in Iraq or anything, but in that sort of take on this development of these bombs and also get into the the main character, but not with wall to wall expositions. Like I got to know this character without having to explain it to me with endless boring fucking exposition that lasted twenty minutes. By his actions, by the way he reacts to stuff. Something happens and he's in the shower and he crumbles to the ground. That right there tells me more of what this guy's about. And again, do, does it without... Think my fly, think you trying to drill into my fucking head. So, I, yeah, I like the Hurt Locker. Didn't feel the running time. Interesting. Hmm. I was really like, interesting story, but I, I interesting is not the right word. I said the straightforward story. I actually liked. Again, this type of film, they would just there'd be a tendency to just put a lot of multiple subplots. They didn't do that. I thought those were the right decision. And, uh, yeah, Jeremy Renner, I thought, did a really good job. I easily think it's one of his better roles. And I, the Herlocker still held up held up for me. I still rather enjoyed it. But, hey, I'm the guy that doesn't like anything popular or anything that dealt with Oscars. But, yet again, there's another film I enjoyed. But, hey, what do I know? With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.